So you want to learn how to play Aztec? If this video isn't enough, here's a 17 page guide written by Danzel92 himself. It goes extremely in depth and if this is not enough for you, then I don't even know what to say. Um, so huge shout out to Danzel for writing this. This is a fantastic uh, guide here and it'll go great with the video. Um, I have Danzel in this video with me and we're gonna talk about the Aztecs and just talk about some of their strats and stuff. Um, I brought him in because I'm not the best with the natives and he knows them way better than I do. So hopefully this video can do some justice. Um, please enjoy and then give us some feedback too on what you think we should change up or how do we think it went, um, how we set it up. So please let us know. Uh, thank you for watching and this is going to be linked below. So the basics with this deck is really that you have your, your three vills, your five vills, and then you have all those May shipments at the beginning. The thing with Aztec is you want to get a really big military mass really quickly because at the start your units are pretty weak and your eco isn't amazing because you get uh, your population gets stuck really easy. So that's why I have the 600 and 700 wood. Yeah, and I, I experienced that when we did the rush strat. We got housed pretty quickly. Yeah, that's one of Aztec's really big weaknesses is right at the beginning you end up really wood starved, which is why I've started adding exotic hardwoods in my deck too. Yeah, because because you just if you it, you just go through it so fast. Yeah, it, like think of it, like ten mace is literally a house, so like you have to have yeah. that, and there are nine mace right in there too, so it makes sense. Yeah, your nine mace, your ten mace, and your warrior priest is already two houses. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> it's pretty brutal, and coyote runners are are very population efficient, but they're still just eat through population. And then Puma, of course, are, are you need a lot of them. Yeah, so what cards in here would you say are like must-haves? You should always have three Warrior Priests in any deck that isn't a treaty deck. Uh, so many different things. Those guys are so important to Aztec. So like when you ship that and you put them on the fire pit, if you have it on the XP dance, with the one that you start with, that's the same as four trading posts. But instead of a like a big chunk of XP, it comes in continuously. You switch it to Fertility Dance, it's about a 20% boost to Villager train time, Military train time, and Navy train time. If you set it to Attack Dance, it's about a 10% buff with just the three that you ship. And on top of that, you can also use it to generate more Warrior Priests more quickly so you can get up to the full 10. And when you have all 10, it's just it's just broken. That's 10 trade posts worth <laughs> of XP. Like you can train a villager in about 11 seconds. Military just pops, just walks out. It's amazing. Gotta love it or hate it. Yeah. The, uh, the other card I really want to talk about is actually in Age 1. It's that uh, War Chief card there. High Priest card. Yeah, that one's really important to playing Aztec, I've found. Because your War Chief is just so important. Now, the attack isn't super great because he only has a base damage of 6, so it only buffs that by 3. But it adds 250 HP, and it lets you tra train the Jaguars. And you want to talk about that cover mode thing, too? Uh, yes, the cover mode glitch. So your War Chief has the option to go into cover mode, which increases his range resist to 50% more for a total of 60% range resist, but it cuts his attack in half. Now, normally when you go into cover mode with a unit, it cuts their speed in half as, like, permanently. Well, that's in, like, well, the cover mode is active. But the War Chief, because he can revive, if he dies while in cover mode, when he revives, he has full speed again. But he keeps the 60% range of this. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous, especially when he gets up to, like, 4,000 hit points in uh, Imperial Age. Yeah, so that's, that's like a treaty must yeah, you don't have to put him in cover mode because his damage does stay half. So it goes down from about 70 to about 35, which is really unfortunate because he is so important. Some people like the range resist, some people don't. If you're facing a lot of skirmishers, then yeah, cover mode glitch is, is great. But if you're facing a lot of things like um, melee units like cav or artillery where it doesn't help, then you then you won't use it. Yeah, and you got the uh, smoking mirror card here to increase the speed as well. Yeah, he uh, when he you've sent that card, he has the same speed as an eagle runner, and he has the two area damage. But that area damage is bugged, so he damages everything, 
while he's attacking, including your own units, buildings, <laughs> um, treasure guardians, trees, everything. So I just like... And it doesn't have a damage cap either. Huh. So normally when like a, a unit has a, a damage cap, so like an artillery piece, like a falconet, will have 100 base damage, mm -hmm. but it caps at 200 damage. Yeah. But the war chief doesn't have that. So if there's like a cav box, like when someone's trying to go a pritchnik on you, and he catches that, he'll damage every single Pritchnik in the box in one swing. That's awesome. It is <laughs> so amazing to use that correctly. You just have to be careful with him and not let him stand near your villagers or something. Yeah. And then, uh, so 600, 700 wood. Absolutely essential. You, yeah. you, the only time you won't need 600 wood is like occasionally in a water deck where you're just chopping so much wood anyways. And obviously treaty where you're trying to reduce the amount of crates you send. Yeah, and then six, uh, six hundred and seven, uh, seven, oh, one thousand. Excuse me, uh, coin repeating. Yeah, the infinite one thousand coin and six hundred coin are just so good because you get so much XP. And yeah, especially like H four. Yeah, in H two, like the ability, like when you get into a fight, you've sent your five ills, your seven hundred wood, your ten mace, three warrior priests, nine mace, six hundred wood. You've gone through all your cards, right? And then you have the 600 coin you can just keep sending. So even if you're in Colonial for half an hour, you can, you have cards you can still send. And you can use that coin to buy food, buy wood at the market. Like, it do, it's not just coin. Yeah. Um, and you, it, you, obviously, you can age up with it, too. But Yeah, do you want to talk about um, some, like, military shipments in, like, H3? Yeah, H3... Aztec has a really awkward time. They want to start training those nobles huts units, but you can't actually build a nobles hut until age three, which is then you have another minute to build that or with four villagers, it's still 30 seconds to build and then another 40 seconds to train a batch of units. And so it's really awkward when you get to age three. And so I found in my experience outside of like really big team games, you really need to send at least two military shipments right away. And that's why I have those two there. Those are the two best, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So six Eagle Runner Knights is a really strong power spike. And it's just super helpful because they're good against just about everything. Yeah, and then the 10 Coyotes is also a really strong power spike because it's it. Um, Fortress Age Coyotes are really strong. Like, because of the way Aztec upgrades work, they're actually stronger in Fortress than other units from other civs would be. Mm -hmm. So when you hit, go to Fortress, you can upgrade them at your War Hut right when you age. And so that's 25% that it upgrades instead of 20. Yeah. And so if you send that, like, it, depending on your matchup, you're either going to send 10 Coyotes or 6 Eagle Runners right when you age up. Upgrade them. It's a really, really strong way to kind of hold any push that happens while you're aging. Because like I said, you're quite vulnerable. It's it's a really bad time for Aztec. The, yeah. Uh, um, so, sorry, you want to talk yeah, about the, uh, the coin cards? Yeah, yeah, towards the end there. Yeah, the waterfront shipments for for Aztec are are super critical as well. There's so many of them. I I could talk about all of them. In my my one v one deck, I have the the Coyote one and I have the Eagle Runner Knight one, but just because those are the two units you're going to use the most. So the Eagle Runner one actually boosts the range by four up to 16 range, which is further than um, any other Dragoon unit except, um, you know, the Portuguese ones yeah. and uh, Japanese Yabusami. And then you have the Coyote, which increases their attack by another 20%. That's pretty awesome. You can get those stacked age three pretty well. Yeah, Fortress Age Coyotes are really scary. Because that 25% upgrade, then 20%, and then Coyote Combat. Yeah, you want to talk about 20% HP. Yeah, you talk about that's that. That's 45. Yeah, 45% to all stats just in Fortress Age. Yeah, that's solid. Uh, you want to talk about yeah, some of the why you have all three of these in here too, the upgrade cards? You sh yeah, you should never have a deck without all three of those. There's just there's no reason not to. They're so important. The uh, Coyote, the Night Combat one there is 15% to um, all the hit points and attack of 
all your knights, which includes the skull knights too. And it's just such a solid card because those three units, the or four units, the arrow knights, eagle runners, jaguars, skulls, they're just so powerful. And buffing them more is really important. And the HP also really important because Aztec has the glass cannon style units. All their units are pretty flimsy, but hit really hard. They're really strong attack. So buffing their HP is really, really important because then they stay strong longer, which is important. It's like Ulans in age two. They're just so paper thin, like even five villagers will beat an Ulan. But as they age up and the hit points start stacking, they end up being probably the best cav in the game apart from, you know, French cav. Yep. Um, and then like Scorched Earth here is a pretty cool card too. Oh, that's such a cool card. So it gives 50% uh, siege damage to all three of your, your Noble's Huts units. It doesn't buff the Skull Knights, which is sad, but that uh, makes a really big difference on your Arrow Knights, which is probably the most important thing you're buffing there. Yeah, so the eco cards I have for Aztec always are the uh, plantation and mill ones. So you have that one, which is 15 to both. And then you have the other one in H2, which is 10 to both. And then you have the farm card, which is a nice 20% buff too. Yeah, those are solid. Now, it's nice not to have... What's really nice about Aztec is that having both those cards is like refrigeration and royal mint. It's 25% to farms and mm -hmm. mills, but you don't have to pick one or the other. You get both a little bit at a time. Yeah. It's a really nice little sieve bonus. Agrarian Ways is another really, really solid card. Yeah. That's probably one of my um, favorite native cards. Out. Yeah, it's one I swap out for eight vills and a thousand wood. Like, I just can't decide which of those three cards is best. But it's a really solid card because it's worth about 1,200, 1,300 resources in upgrades. Sure, yeah. And those upgrades are, are good because they don't just benefit the farms and the plantations. They benefit coin mines, mm -hmm. hunts, berries, everything. Like, they're really good upgrades to have. So this is my Scout Rush deck. This is my Cheese deck. So on uh, H2 there, there's a card called Advanced Scout. And this, scout's re th this card is so fun. So Scouts, when they're buffed by 200% attack and 50% hit points... They end up with 180 HP, 15 attack, but they're classified the same way a skirmisher is, but they do melee damage. So they're just kind of good against everything except like lancers and uh, like really strong musketeers. That's awesome. <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty funny and they only cost 90 wood. So if you end up on unknown and you have like four animals under your TC and there's no hunts on the entire map, it's actually a really good unit to go for just because it only costs wood. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And if you combine them with like a handful of Puma and some mace, like it's a really strong uh, unit and it's really good against sieves with, or, or against like a, a pike bow combination, like Expo Pike or China's old Han, mm -hmm. just because it's not countered by pikes like a cab is yeah. or a coyote is. So it's a really interesting option. That's pretty cool. Um, I've I've done it in team games. I've done it in one v ones. They're they're fun, and the humor of fifty scouts running across the map in stealth. Yeah, is just because <laughs> they still can stealth. That's awesome. I gotta try just, that. It's hilarious. Um, any other ones here? We got some of the the Janie card or the Jaguars. Yeah, we'll talk about those in the treaty deck. I think. Okay. Yeah. So I want to talk about water now. Sure. Yeah, so Aztec is probably the best water sieve in the game. It's so hard to make a deck for water as Aztec just because they have so many good cards. So on the top row there, you have Fish Market. We got Team Cheap Fishing Boats and Schooners. So you can get 15 wood fishing ships, and that is just that's just broken. Like, two villagers on wood will sustain... Uh, constant fishing ship production. Yeah, and this card's a team card too, so that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's really helpful for the uh, the sieves that either don't get schooners yeah. or have a worse schooners. So like India, um, for example, only has the the dock rickshaw and a slight reduction. They're, they get 70 wood mm -hmm. fishing ships. So when you stack that with it, it's really helpful for them too. That's awesome. And of course, any European sieve that has schooners or... Um, 
yeah, I guess it's just the Euro Civs and Aztec. Yeah. If you have those two stacked, then you know, everyone gets 15 wood fishing ships. Now the Water Dance is a, a card that unlocks the Water Dance at Fire Pit, which increases the strength of your warships. It's very, very strong. Um, with the 10 Warrior Priests, it's something like 100% buff. It's kind of broken. The reason I have the... Uh, so Offshore Support there, that's a really strong card for Aztec. It gives 5 extra range to all their fish, all their ships, and it adds another 20% attack. So even though the description of the card is only has more range, it actually buffs your attack by 20%, which is very significant. That's awesome. And then the 2 War Canoe there, right next to it. So those are actually a Fortress Age ship. Wow. But you can ship at age two. What? Yeah. Because why so not? <laughs> they're, yeah, they're really strong. And then, of course, I have my other cards. So I have um, my farm card on there just because there's whales. If there's whales, I don't really need to worry about coin, but for, for food, I do. Yeah. And I keep agrarian ways just because I'll have the wood to build the, the farms, but I don't want to worry about the upgrades. Mm. And so there's that one there, Artificial Islands, which cuts the wood cost of your ships by 50%, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I love how they have improved warships, and it's a cannon logo. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, That's another 25% uh, attack as well and hit points. And that uh, two Tlaloc canoe in age three, that's an age four warship. That's crazy. So you can get all your warships in age early. That's pretty cool. Through cards. And then there's a, a big button at the dock for 2,000 coin where you can get another, I think it's four of them. So you can get a, an age four Navy in age three. That's pretty insane. <laughs> I and didn't even you know that. Yeah. Water, yeah, and then you add your water dance on top of that, and they're just, they just make frigates and monitors look like nice little boats with potential, you know? And that's hilarious. All about shooting arrows. Yeah, well, the the Tlaloc canoe shoots this massive, like, it's like an atlatl. It's huge. Yeah. It's awesome. I love that. I love the animation on it, especially with the five range. Mm -hmm. So this deck here is my, my treaty 1v1 deck where I'll need coyotes. You don't need them for every matchup, but sometimes you do. I prefer to avoid using them just because they cost wood. So Aztecs and treaty are kind of weird. So... We're going to look at those uh, those coin cards a lot now. So you have Town Dance, which is a card I want to talk about first, H2. So that card um, unlocks the Town Dance at the Fire Pit, which buffs the hit points and attack of your buildings. And it gets to kind of ridiculous levels. Now you have a gameplay clip of, how many was it? 40 Flaming Arrows? Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> I think it was 40 or 50, and it shot the wall, and it didn't even go down. Yeah. And it even if you spawn a uh, monster truck with the cheat codes, it takes a full second to knock down the wall. <laughs> That's it's, very funny. It's really broken. I can't remember the exact hit points. We'll have to check the, the gameplay clip, yeah. but it's really important. So if you're playing defensive um, in Treaty or on a, a map like Orinoco, you can use that to just kind of wall forward offensively. Mm -hmm. And just force them to make a lot of siege units that you can just take out with Arrow Knight. So against a Civ that is has a better eco than you, you can help use that to wear down their eco. Awesome. By forcing them to make a lot of artillery and just you hide behind the walls with your super long-ranged Arrow Knights that nothing can touch. And it's kind of mean, but it's one of the ways to play Treaty well. So then you have your train time cards on the left there. You got your fencing school and your war hut training. So fencing school reduces the train time of all your units except eagle runners and the jaguar, like the pet jaguars and coyote runners. It even speeds the uh, the rate that your warrior priest trains. So it's usually your first colonial card in a, in a treaty game. So you can get that warrior priest boom going. Yeah. And then next to it you have the uh, the war hut training, which is really, really good because it reduces the uh, train time of your Puma by another 40. So those two stacked is minus 80. So they train in about 10, like 5 or 10 seconds. Then you have the Fertility Dance on top of that. Like You can use that to get a lot of units out really, really quickly if you need to. And then you have the Stealth Coyote card right next to that. And Coyote Combat, yeah. of course. But the, Coyote, uh, the Stealth Coyote card is... Uh, I, I find it's really important... Um, 
in a lot of situations where you need to get up close to either skirmishers or, or artillery in a kind of an open space where they can, you know, they can hit and run if you aren't in stealth. And so it's a way to, to get a little advantage there. And for raids too. You can just get around yeah. without being seen. Yeah, so in like, not necessarily in Treaty, but in Free For All, you definitely uh, will find a lot of use for that card. Mm -hmm. And uh, like just for raids in general. And then on the far right there, I have um, Stone Masons. Right at the end yep. of the H2 there. So that helps you build buildings faster. And because your military buildings as Aztec take a minute to build because they're an outpost, outpost type building instead of a like just a barracks or a stable mm -hmm. um, when you have that it actually lets you forward base much quicker so 10 so if you have your four villagers forward they can build it in only a few seconds rather than rather than 30 and that's a uh, really important in treaties i don't i don't think it's ever important even in a team game but like if you're playing super late it's not a bad card to have good stuff um so you always got your Eco cards, obviously. Um, yeah, the, the Aztec have so many farm cards. So awesome, age one, yeah. you have one. Mm -hmm. You have three in age two and one in age four. And then you have an age up politician in Imperial for another 20. That's awesome. So you actually start gathering food from farms at like two a second, like livestock. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, they have the best farms in the game without a question. Yeah, and then you got your three uh, military cards, as we talked previously. Yeah. Um, and then ruthlessness, yeah, ruthlessness, yeah, which is a great card um, because it gives a bonus to your mace, your puma, and your coyotes against villagers. And one of the things about puma is that they have really high siege, and so they're kind of like an aprichnik in some ways. Once you've sent that card, they're uh, they're speedy, they hit really hard against villagers with the the attack dance and then the bonus. Mm -hmm. And they they like you can put them in the box formation as well. Okay, so you know how Aprichniks, you can put them in, you have the Cav Archer, and then you have the 49 Aprichniks, like, mm -hmm. from that crazy video you have on Carolina where you carried three people by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was one of my favorite videos of yours, and that was where I first learned about the defensive thing, and I started messing around. I, yeah, you can use that as a, a fun little way, to, you can put 49 Puma in a square with a single Eagle Runner in the middle, or a single Mace, but the Eagle Runners are faster. And so you can tear through walls in like one toss, like like a Pritchnik's do, and then you can just set them loose in the base, and they just they'll tear down factories, they'll tear down plantations, run through with, against villagers. Like Puma are, are actually fairly good raiders once you've uh, upgraded them well. That's awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun. And if you look at your uh, temple support card there, there's the Puma one. Which one? Um, over here not in the deck actually oh. it's below no in waterfront okay not bad. yeah there you go this Boom, one yeah, right yeah gotcha yeah that one boosts their speed up to six that's awesome <laughs> yeah it's it's just a little bit slower than a hussar which makes them really useful even in late game um puma are one of the the probably the best pike in the entire game and they're just super versatile if you want them to be they never have a lot of hit points. They only max out at like 260, 270. But their attack is just it's just insane. That's awesome. And their siege and their siege is just stupid. It's like a hundred in Imperial. Um, and then you want to talk about this card here too with the ten Phillies. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's the other eco card. So you you send that in H three and it boosts your your plantation and your farm gather rates by another ten percent, and you get ten villagers with it. Yeah, I like that. So it's pretty it's, fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really helps you get up your villager count in a, especially in like a team game or something, mm -hmm. where you need a lot of villagers to try to keep up because you don't get factories, you don't, you don't have the best coin eco ever, and so it kind of sucks. You have to spend a thousand coin on it, but you get a much better eco, and ten villagers pay for themselves so fast. That's sweet. Um, and then yeah, this one right here too with the. Uh... The defense, yeah, that's yeah. that's really important because once again, because your military buildings are out are uh, outpost style buildings, you have the build limit on them, and so when you send that, you can get much more. And because your units train pretty slow, except the the puma and the the mace, you 
it really helps you get out a better volume of units. So I consider that an absolutely essential card for uh, for late game. So all your team decks and all your treaty decks will need that. I don't think you'll ever get to that point in a 1v1, and if you do, you've probably done something wrong. <laughs> yeah, especially with their rush tactics, how good they are. Oh, goodness, their rush is just so powerful. Yeah. Um, there's a few other waterfront cards there that are really Sure, fun. yeah. I don't... Yeah, um, there's the Skull Knight one. So that one gives them an extra area damage. Now, I don't use Skull Knights a whole lot. They're not really easy to mask because you can only train them at the fire pit or ship them or the big button at the plantation, but they are really strong units. They get 600 HP in Imperial because they shadow tech, and with that, they can actually cut through three ranks of units at the same time. So, like, if you have, like, you know, 50 skirmishers all lined up in a box, right, like, just in a row, uh, mm -hmm. the Skull Knight will actually cut through three of them at once. The Skull Knights are hard to mass, and they're hard to use efficiently, but if you do use them, they are very strong, and that card really makes them a lot better. Because being able to cut through three rows of units at the same time is just so important, because they don't get artillery, right? Yeah. None of their units have splash damage except the Skull Knights and your War Chief. And then there's the uh, the mace one at the top mm -hmm. there. I do not like that card. Yeah, it shouldn't be because, using mace age three, right? <laughs> well, you can use mace age three if you want, but twenty five percent hit points is only twenty HP. They only have eighty to start with. Like it's not for a thousand coin. If it was free, if there was a card that was free and it said, "Oh, twenty five percent mace hit points," it'd be fine. But it's just, it's not a great card. And once your opponent has artillery, like you just can't use mace anymore. Yeah. One falconet volley, and they're all gone. Yeah. And the <laughs> last one here is the uh, the jaguars. Yeah, the jaguar prowl knights. That one's really, really good. Um, it's also strong because it sends eighteen of them, mm -hmm. as well as the twenty five percent damage buff. And that's uh, jaguar prowl knights are just the best anti melee unit unit. They're just good against everything that attacks with a melee attack. All of them. From Cav, Halberdiers, Hatamoto Samurai, everything. They'll just beat everything. And the 25% attack makes them just so much more cost effective. And it also boosts their siege by another 25%. Yeah, so they get about they get 102 siege, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. so somewhere between 100 and 105. It's really high. For a one population unit with like 600 HP. Yeah. The Janies are basically your Cav late game. They, uh, it seems kind of ridiculous, but because nothing actually counters them, because they don't have any unit tags except hand infantry, um, nothing, nothing counters them. And so they can just sit on the front row with your war chief and just soak up so much damage and do a lot too. And this card, uh, boosts their HP and attack by 35%. And delivers the maximum amount you can have of 12. They're just so good at tanking. Because like a lot of your units aren't good against skirmishers. A lot of your units aren't good against artillery. And so to have those guys sitting at the front. And they're good against artillery too. Because artillery doesn't even have a bonus against them. And they do melee damage at like 39 uh, maxing out. So they'll they do more than a Hussar in, in Fortress does against artillery. Like They're really strong. It seems ridiculous, but they're, they're very powerful. And that card's really important to have if you're playing late game with, with Aztec, along with the card that lets you train them from your war chief. So after you send this card in, can you train up to 12 again? Like, does it increase yeah, after, the cap they, to 12? You can, yeah, you can only have 12 total max. Gotcha. Sweet. Uh, but they only cost 100 food, and with the best farms in the game, yeah. 100 food is, is nothing. That's nothing. And they don't take up pop space, right? No, no pop, yeah. which is also really important because as Aztec, you only get 91 military population space because you have the fire pit with the 10 warrior priests. Mm -hmm. and then you got another 15 villagers on top of that dancing. And so you're only using, you know, 84 of your villagers. And then you have, you know, only 91 military pop space. And your units are really strong, but having the extra, the extra 12 makes a huge difference. Yeah. And the fact that nothing counters them just makes it even funnier. Yeah, that uh, that and the scouts are two units I need to try out more. It sounds like. Yeah, the uh, I cover them both in the the guide I'm writing right now. 
Mountains. There's a few other cards I kind of want to talk yeah, about sure. that I don't even have unlocked per se. There's uh, Team Medicine in the bottom right there. Yeah. So that's um, a questionable card, but it really helps if you have a, a French teammate mm -hmm. or um, even a German teammate where their their boom's a little slower or a Spain teammate. Because like Germany has so many villagers trained. They have 140 vills worth to train because they have the the settler wagons, the villagers. Spain doesn't have any boom options outside of the water. France doesn't have any way to, like, because their villagers train slower. So that's a card worth considering sometimes, mm -hmm. which is really good. And then there's the farm travel cards. Yeah, these on the side of here. Yeah, they're kind of weird, but they're really efficient. Like in age one, you're getting 400 wood. In age two, you're getting... 800 instead of 700 and in h3 you're getting 1200 mm -hmm. so if you know you're going to go on to a low hunt map if you know you're going to need a lot of food that's not a bad card to have it makes sense yeah especially that paired up with argarian ways like h3 exit ways, very yeah. strong yeah it's just so so cost efficient and then there's that big button one yeah um i don't know if that one's ever worth it but the big button pop at 30 minutes when all your your big buttons max out is kind of ridiculous. You can get like 200 units in less than a minute. Love it. <laughs> so you could possibly consider that uh, old ways, a way to make that more affordable. Cool. Um, what about, you want to talk about the rod and the... Uh, yeah, the subject. rod alero card is, is very entertaining against Sue because they run at about the same speed as a bow rider does. So you can't, they can't get kited. And normally Sue is really a pain for, for Aztec to deal with because they're so mobile and coyote runners are just are not as fast and you don't have a real skirmisher unit you just have the mace which don't have the best range and they just die so quick to axe riders and so having the rod alero shipment is one thing you can consider versus sue and the zapotex have a really high hp for a hand for like a melee unit they're not great um, but they have a lot of HP, which is quite helpful for tanking sometimes in a rush. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I think last few ones here, we got yeah. the three trip tra tra trade post travel. Away. Yeah, see, that's a, a really strong card. It gets you three trade post travel, wall, which can be either on a route or on uh, native allies. The only thing you have to be cautious of is if you do send them, the travel wall can die. I lost two of them once to a German player, and I've never used it again since. But some people really like that card. What's your thoughts on Aztec Mining? Uh, Aztec Mining is really good on a map with lots of mines. Um, some maps obviously don't, but a map like uh, Deccan, where you start with the 5,000 coin, mm -hmm. or Hispaniola, where you start with 5,000 coin right in your base, that's not a bad card to have because it, it really helps you get a, a large mass of Eagle Runners a lot quicker. And if you can stack that with, say, agrarian ways at a plantation upgrades, and then you have your eight vill shipment, and like you can get your your villagers mining coin faster than livestock as well. It's really strong. It's awesome. I'm trying to see if there's the only problem with Sorry, that is once you send it, then you find that coin mines last about ten seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like go go through them real quick. Um, yeah, it's like when you're playing as Germany and you have 10 settler wagons mm -hmm. on a mine, you look away for two seconds and you know, they're all just standing there. Yeah. I, oh, the Arrow Knight card. I didn't mention that one. Uh, this one here? Yeah, that that buffs them by another 20% and ships 10 of them. Mm -hmm. And that also boosts their siege. And it also boosts their damage versus ships because they have a bonus against ships as well. Nice. Which a lot of people don't realize. Oh, yeah, because they kind of act like the Culverin. So it kind of does that same same job. Yeah, they have a two times bonus against ships, so they already start out at 72 damage. So on a water map, you can really consider that a good card. I don't have it in my water deck right now. I, I swap it out depending on if I know I'm going to get a lot of naval pressure. Mm -hmm. Like my, I, I swap my decks out so often because there's just so many good cards with Hazten. Yeah. All right, is there anything else here you want to talk about? Uh, Team 3 Villagers in Marketplace. Yeah. Really cool card because it ships native villagers. So if you're with Dutch, it lets them get 53. Cool. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. 
or uh, with Japan, it lets them get 78. Like, it's just a nice little buff for civs that have a, a cap on their villagers that's lower. Mm -hmm. um, so it's less useful if you're playing with, like, European civs that have 99 vils. Like, the three vils aren't a huge difference. Sure. But that could be a really good with, treaty. With, yeah. Yeah, especially if you're with Dutch. Like, just in general, having a Dutch teammate, that's a great card. And because Dutch has such good skirmishers and uh, good artillery, they're a great combination to have with Aztec anyways. So if you ever team up with a Dutch player, send that card. Yeah. Swap it out for five villas and sh send that one. I love that. And then what are your thoughts on uh, the Team 2 Warrior Priests? Team Warrior Priests is only really good if you have an Iroquois or a Sioux teammate. Because they truly use it. Yeah. Yeah, they can actually use it. Because otherwise they're just a healer, which isn't super useful in the fighting style in Age of Empires three i mean maybe like with an india teammate you could send it so they could heal up elephants or auto or ports to heal up mamelukes but mm -hmm. it's just so niche if you're not talking about having a sioux teammate using it to buff their fire dance or hero to buff their attack dance or whatever like it's just not super useful yeah well because it's only two yeah all right and they do get team crates of gold which yeah, is do. really interesting yeah the Team 1000 one is, is pretty strong. The, well, if that that needs to be... They should have one of these as like a repeating one. That'd be awesome. Maybe like this one should yeah, be a the, repeating one. The 1000 team is the same as your 1000 repeating. Like it's the same amount of coins. So like it's a good card to have in some ways. I don't know how often you would ever use it because usually you rush as Aztec and yeah. whatever. But it's a really good card. Maybe, to maybe like a 20 minute treaty. Yeah, and a 20 mm -hmm. treaty. That would be really strong. And then you have Team 3 Janies, the worst card in the game. <laughs> age 2. <laughs> age 2. If it was Age 1, it'd be a great card, but yeah, no. That's funny. And now they're too good, Age 1. Yeah. There's um a lot of Jaguar Prowl Knight uh, shipments I haven't even unlocked. There's just so many of them. Yeah. That last one is like 12 of them or something. 9. This one's 11. 11. 11, yeah. If you like those guys, then by all means use them. I usually just make eagle runners for some reason. Those are too good, man. <laughs> too OP. And then there's, uh, oh, I guess I should mention in the water, there's the privateer shipment as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, those are like pirate ships. They're, they're pretty strong and they benefit from your improved warships, your offshore support, and your water dance. Mm hmm. So they can get, like, really scary. That's pretty cool. Especially have, 500 coin, age 4. Like, that's yeah, dirt it, cheap. It's, it's very strong. And when you combine that with your other dances and the fact that your eco on water is as good as, like, uh, the French economy, mm -hmm. like, you can afford 500 coin, no, no problem. Yeah. And those are just a huge power spike, especially if you ship them with the water flag in just the right spot, like, mm -hmm. behind their base or something. Mm -hmm. Because the, the water dance boosts their, their attack and their hit points, and they have the extra five range. So that's, that's a really good shipment. Yeah, lots of really cool cards as Aztec. All right, is there any, anything else you want to talk about? Well, that thousand coin in Treaty, I got to tell you, you just keep sending that because you'll have the shipments from that XP boost. Yeah. And every vill that's on there is the same as an unupgraded factory. And you kind of need that coin too, honestly. Oh, so much. They're... My my macro in Treaty is like 25 bills on food, the rest on coin. Yeah. And then once those start rolling in continuously, I switch about 28, 30 to, to food and the rest to coin. Got but it. for every bill that's gathering from that pile of crates that sits under your TC, there are another there are factories worth of coin. It's quite quite strong. It's good stuff. Yeah. I love that card. Yeah. It honestly it's saves the day kind of a little bit. Yeah, and sometimes like in a, a team game or whatever, you can use that to buy wood for upgrades or just help you get up to Imperial. Like it's just a really good thing to have because you don't have factories. And look at that home city; it's beautiful. It is beautiful. War chief there on the left, walking around across the bridge. So I'm writing a comprehensive Aztec guide right now, covering all their units, uh, builds, treaty builds, because there's not really any guides out there right now for late game Aztec. A lot of people just assume that they're not good in the late game and that they're just a rush sieve. And they're it's not even close to true. So I'm currently writing a guide detailing everything there is to know about this sieve. So there should be a link down in the description.